Hey, I'm Kenny Lattimore, and you're checking out Living the Hustle. If you want more information about me, check out KennyLattimore.com or follow me. Follow me on Twitter. Check out all my new music, the new album, the new tour, everything that's coming, all encompassing. KennyLattimore.com. God bless. This ain't no game, no trophy win No contest rules to box you in, girl You're more than that to me You're the Michelle to my tree No rush, no stress What's going on, my man? Man, it's good to be here Yeah, well, it's really, really, it's really, really good to have you here Actually, um, before we get into this, um, I'm looking at your brand new CD It's my single, okay. Find a Way Okay, yeah, okay so, um, I guess, you know, before you got here, Kenny, I actually, um, I went on the, on the air and I said, well, Kenny Lattimore is on his way. There was a few questions you'd like to ask Kenny Moore, Lattimore, what would you ask him, you know? So, I got some... You list, you got a list? No, no, you know, <laughs> but, but, but some, of them got, some of them were kind of dirty, you know? Oh, there are a lot of females listening. Kenny. Oh, okay, good stuff. Good stuff. I like that. I like but we won't. We won't get into that. So, uh, um, again, um, born in D.C. Washington D.C. Okay, okay. I read something that said Maryland, but I guess it's well, six Maryland. I went to high school in Maryland, so I, I grew up uh, a portion. I guess to be technical, I was born in Washington D.C., lived there for you know several years of sure. the beginning of my life, and then. Uh, actually, I'll give you a little further information. Went to Pennsylvania for about three years uh, at Lincoln University, okay. HBCUs, and uh, returned back. Uh, my mother was an educator, and okay. she worked at Lincoln University for the three years, and then she returned back to the D.C. area and worked at Howard University directly in the district. But we lived outside of the district at that point in the Maryland suburbs, okay. so that's where I went to high school. How many siblings? <clears throat> there are seven of us total. Seven total. And I am my... Father's oldest son, so I'm I'm two number two, right. and I'm my mother's uh, baby. Where I have an older sister, okay. uh, so I kind of got the best of both worlds. Right, right. Okay, <laughs> and you are an alumnus of of Howard University. Howard University. Yeah. Did you study music? Uh, by I chance? actually did uh, architecture and planning. Okay, and it was something that. I, I did love, I have to say, and I did well in it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I got a record deal in my first year at Howard University and started to record for Epic Records with a group called Mannequin. So I, I didn't stay, but I was there, I guess, long enough to be uh, alumnus. Okay. Well, uh, I'm looking here also that uh, there was a particular song that was uh, written by a high school friend. Yeah. <laughs> now, what was that about? I mean... You know what? The, the song for you that has become the wedding song for right, so many exactly. people. Exactly. All of it, it originally started as a wedding song for my, my buddy Kenny Lerum. Uh, he was writing this song for his lady, and I said, you know, well, let me check it out. And he said, okay, this is what the music going to sound like, and I want you to sing this for me. And uh, then he gave me the words, and I looked at the list of words. I was like, there's no way that I'm going to be able to say <laughs> all of these words in one song, you know. But he gave me the, the whole cadence and how I was supposed to do it. And uh, it has developed into, uh, I guess, uh, everybody's wedding. Welcome back to another edition of Living the Hustle. I'm your host, Misha, and next to me I have the wonderful Mr. Kenny Lattimore. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now let's get right back into it. Okay. The new album. New album, Back to Cool. Back to Cool. Back to Cool. Really what is about me being okay with, uh, or anyone being okay with, and content with whatever state their relationship and their love is at, being okay with themselves. Now let's talk about that, because you were, are married to Shantae Moore and you're currently right now going to divorce. Um, how has that affected the music that you do? Well, uh, it's interesting because I don't really uh, let my music spill up. I know a lot of times people use their music as a catharsis or to, to you know, get their whole story out. Um, I don't. A lot of times my music has been about my ideals about love, perfect love, just the human experience about things that men don't always say that we should say. And uh, this album really was not an exception, but in an interesting way, art usually imitates life. We usually have an experience and then we record it. But for me, the, my life began to imitate the art because I started singing songs that were about heartbreak and fixing things and breaking it up and and all that and all of a sudden my life went through it a little bit later so um, it's a little different a little different for me 
Now, how are you in a relationship with Shantae Moore now? Because you do have a son together, and you've yeah. worked together on other projects, the gospel mm -hmm. album and mm -hmm. things that lovers do. Yeah. So you have to, you know, having that kind of history, you, it can never be erased. So uh, what happens is we, we know that we have to raise this child, and we have... Uh, a, a certain responsibility to be at least in each other's space for the next nine to ten years. He's nine years old right now. And, uh, yeah, we, you just make the best of every situation. You bring happiness. You bring what you can to the table every day to make sure that life is quality and that it is not only quality for yourself but also for your children and others. Now, another transition you're going through is the record label. Yeah. Oh, Wow. My label, Sincere Soul Records, uh, wasn't a, a goal of mine initially to have a record label, but I thought it was birthed out of necessity. Uh, I, I love to sing, and I wasn't going to stop necessarily, but I didn't have a great desire to record again necessarily. But uh, some friends of mine came about, uh, Carvin, Carvin Hagen's in particular was a catalyst that said, nope, we need your voice in the marketplace. Come back. I've got some songs for you and uh, my single Find A Way. Uh, is the first product of that conversation and that commitment that he made to me. So uh, it, as it evolved, I'm embracing it more and more. It's tough because we as creative people um, know how to go in and present the content. And that, that's really the job is to pr present the content. But when it comes to marketing and promotion, their budgeting and, and different strategies that are involved that I'm not used to, that's not fun. <laughs> But you, you, know, you do what you have to do, and I think that the rewards are greater sometimes when you sacrifice. I think that's why you said my label. My label. It is really my label. The responsibility is mine, and whether it, it, it succeeds or fails, it will be my responsibility. So I said, well, hey, if I'm going to take the, the gamble and the risk, then it will be on my music. It will be a product of mine that, uh, in the end, I understand that I have a fan base and I have some things that I've worked on for many years securing uh, so that it would make sense for me to do it as opposed to coming out with a brand new artist. And in the event that we have the type of success that warrants uh, the signing, if you will, of, of other artists, I would love to do that for young talent. And <laughs> this particular song that's, that, I'm listen, that we're listening to uh, right never now, too busy. Talk, Never Too Busy, mm -hmm. uh, Major hit. Wow, thank you. Know, you know, almost like national anthem type stuff. <laughs> no, but seriously. And uh, I'm actually, I'm 50 years old, so been around a little bit and did the nightclub scenes, mm -hmm. the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. This was always... This was always playing. Sure. No, and it was always the one that was going to put bring the people to the floor. Oh, we, could slow the, cool. we could slow the club down. People are going to go <laughs> and get them something to drink. But most of the lovers are going to hit the floor on this tune. What inspired you? You know what, I think, well, this was written actually by Kipper Jones and okay. Dave Hall. And Dave Hall had the, I guess, the beats that were bringing him to the floor at that time. He was responsible for a lot of uh, the Mary J. Blige hits and uh, Mariah Carey from, from that era. But uh, Kipper Jones had this thing. He was like, I just want to say, never too busy do you relate to that. You know, because mm -hmm. when you're the singer and you didn't write the song, you have to make sure that you at least relate to it so that you can authentically tell the story. Right. So I was like, oh yeah, I get that. I'm busy, but I'm not too busy. <laughs> Never too busy for you though. No, that's, that's real special. That's real. Now, you've been in the industry since 1988? Yeah, about 88. Uh, yeah, or even one more year, 87. I, got, I, I signed my first record deal in 87 with a band called Mannequin. And uh, my mama managing me and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> And uh, it was um, quite an experience because um, sometimes you get in, into things and you, you know, of course my vision and my dream, like, like most artists, I thought I was going to be rich and famous <laughs> overnight, you know, or I wanted it at least. I, kn I knew that wasn't quite the case, mm -hmm. but I uh, was able to have a great experience and go through the process of what it would be to put an entire project out. I got a chance to work with Ronnie and Charlie Wilson from the Gap Band, wow. and uh, that was priceless. Charlie Singleton from Cameo, so was able to rub shoulders with those veterans, get on the road, tour, all that kind of stuff. The only thing that, that wasn't so great was I was a student at Howard University when I got that deal, and I wasn't able to finish at Howard. I ended up um, doing the album, and I, I did have a great dean at uh, Architecture and Planning, because that was a school I was in, Architecture and Planning. And he allowed me to take fine arts courses to prepare for the road. Five and six 45 minute sets a night at these clubs and bars and stuff I hated. But it teaches you how to connect to people on stage and how to perform and capture 
the attention. So how do you think the industry has changed since you came in in 87 to now we're in 2012 and you have social media. Mm -hmm. So that plays a big role in the way artists connect with their uh, audience now. Yeah, and social media I think is wonderful. I'm on Twitter, so you can follow me at Kenny Lattimore. Um, Facebook, all that, yes. official Kenny Lattimore is, is me. And uh, KennyLattimore.com, having a website. I was one of the first R&B uh, artists to have a website, actually. Wow. Um, Sony was big on the technology in 96. And they were like, we want you to go in. Uh, I think, you know, me and Maxwell, some of the artists that were on Columbia at the time, we were, we were uh, the first to do it. And um, I think that it has definitely been a game changer because I can talk to you directly, like right now. I can get on Twitter, what have you. I can. I can talk and, and, and know where my fan base is, whereas I was completely dependent on other people's research to tell me whether my performance was translating to people. Find a way.